This next chapter is going to be all about layers inside of Illustrator. And so in this particular movie, I'm going to first take you through a brief tour of the layers panel. So much the same as in other applications like Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator does support layers of content, which means you have objects that can be stacked into individual groups using something called the layers panel. So first things first, let's open up the layers panel. It's over here on the right-hand side of my Essentials workspace. It looks like two sheets of paper on top of each other. When you hover over it, it will say Layers. Click on that to temporarily activate it, and then I'm going to click and drag it out into the window so that we can easily see everything that's going on. So by default, when you create a new document inside of Illustrator, it will create a brand new layer called Layer 1, and this is the layer that we're seeing here inside of my Layers panel. Inside of the Layers panel, you have several options at the bottom. You have this button, which will allow you to locate a specific object. You have the Make and Release Clipping Mask button. You have a Create New Sublayer button, and you have a Create New Layer button. So basically, you have two types of layers, regular layers and sublayers. Sublayers are just nested inside of regular layers, and I'll show you how to work with those in a future movie. Inside the Layers panel, also, you will notice that you have the ability to control the visibility, the lock, and also the toggle switch for each layer right over here on the left-hand side. So the visibility switch turns the layer on and off. As you can see, when I turn that off, everything disappears. Click it back on, everything comes back in. If I click the toggle for the lock, that means nothing out here can be done to this piece of artwork. So, for instance, you see how my pencil and a little circle with a line through it appears here. That means, hey, you can't do anything. And when I try to make a selection or do something right now, I'm feverishly clicking my mouse. It's not doing anything because that layer is locked. So if you want an easy way to prevent certain pieces of artwork from being edited or destroyed or manipulated in any way, just put them on their own layer and lock that layer. To toggle this layer open to see all of the sub-layers, all you have to do is click on this little triangle here. When you click on that, it's going to expand it down and show you all of the different sub-layers here in the sub-layers panel. And so, as you can see, this one has several different pieces that make up this Bulldog logo. I can close that by clicking on the triangle again, and I can unlock it by removing the lock symbol. You'll notice over here there is a little circle which enables you to select or target specific layers or objects and then move them around to different layers if you choose. I have a movie covering this specifically later on in this chapter. Finally, the last thing you need to know about the Layers panel is the Layers panel drop-down menu that's located here in the top right-hand corner. When you see this, click on it and you can open it up and see all of the options. Let me move this so you can see it just a little bit better. I'll move it over here and open it up. There we go. So we have several different options here to create new layers, create new sublayers, duplicate the current layer, delete a selection that you might have. You can go in and view the layer options, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. You can make clipping masks directly from here, enter isolation mode. You can also exit isolation mode, locate an object, merge selected artwork, flatten the artwork, collect into a new layer. That means if you had several objects selected, you could collect them and move them to a new layer. You could release things to layers. You can also create a template. You could hide all layers, outline all layers, or lock all layers. This is a very powerful drop-down menu where many of the key functions of working with layers are found. So you want to make sure that you're familiar with its location and everything it does. Now, again, this is going to come with time and learning more and more about layers, which we'll do throughout this chapter, but I just wanted to make you aware of it now. So that's the brief overview of the Layers panel. If you've got it out on screen like I do, you can dock it back by clicking and dragging it back, and I'll just place mine directly above the Artboards panel like I had it before, or you can simply reset the Essentials workspace if that's the workspace that you're currently using. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can start using layers to make our projects more efficient.